Hello, I'm Ernie Humphrey, the CEO and COO of Treasury Careers. I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to join us for our webinar today, AR Best Practices, Five Steps to Strategic Customer, AP Relations, and Lower DSO. I would like to thank our webinar partner today, Hi Radius, whose strong claim to thought leadership helps us make this webinar possible today. While the speed of the credit to cash cycle heavily depends on terms dictated by the customer, a low-hanging fruit is the broken information exchange mechanism between accounts receivable and accounts payable teams, which have traditionally been viewed as a transactional process involvement. From exchange of invoices, collaborating over payment terms and early payment discounts, acquiring accurate remittance information, and providing convenient payment options, AR KPIs are heavily impacted due to largely manual, time-consuming, collaboration, and communication. Today, you will discover how companies are leveraging technology to reduce receivables processing costs by driving electronic invoicing and payment adoption with small and medium-sized businesses, maximizing top-line growth by virtually eliminated blocked orders and credit holds, using real-time collaboration with customer AP teams, improving the customer experience with transparent and quick resolution of credit issues, customer claims, disputes, and deductions, and reducing AP processing lead times by eliminating the requirement of remittance information. Before I delve into the content, I'm going to offer a few quick words about Treasury.coms and cover a few housekeeping items. Treasury Careers is a division of TreasuryJobs.com, and we offer thought leadership content and resources that empower Treasury professionals to own their career success. On our website, we have a link to our parent company, TreasuryJobs.com, which is a great resource for Treasury job opportunities. We offer a plethora of Treasury certification resources and Treasury best practices, and we also offer complimentary webinars like this one today. Now on to our exciting housekeeping items. The slides are currently available under the handouts area in your GoToWebinar control panel. We will send you links via email to the presentation and the webinar recording over the next 24 hours. For those of you that are interested in receiving CTP credits for today's webinar, I need you to answer all the polling questions during the webinar and remain on for the duration of the webinar. If you have any questions regarding CTP credit, please send in me an email to ernie at 360thoughtleadership.com. We'd like to hear from you today so we can take your questions at any time in the questions area of your GoToWebinar control panel. I'll do my best here to get to your questions at the Q&A session, which will be at the tail end of the webinar. Fear not, if I do not get to your question, I will follow up with you directly after the webinar. Finally, we appreciate your consideration in taking a short survey at the end of the webinar as we always strive to improve the ROI we offer our attendees for their valuable time. So in order to meet our objectives that we discussed at the beginning of the webinar, our speakers were to be myself to give us more on the theoretical side of those best practices, engaging AP teams and lowering DSO, and Kieran Rana, Director of Solutions Engineering at High Radius. We are, unfortunately, we are having an emergency with Kieran, and he might not be able to join us, so I'm gonna do very, my very best to cover the practical side of the presentation. Again, fear not, I am a longtime treasury practitioner and I have been very much engaged in the arena of AR automation over the past few years as I've seen this uh, really explode in terms of allowing companies to own their cash conversion cycles. So for our agenda, I'll kick us off by reviewing some accounts receivable uh, pain points. And, and, then, and then what we'll see there is that a lot of these pain points, some of the root causes are due to problems that we have with our supplier relationships. And I think one of the tremendous values of APAR and AR automation is that it really it has the opportunity to improve supplier and customer relationships. Uh, and also in terms of uh, taking care of some of these accounts receivable pain points, it's also going to allow us to lower our DSO and again, own, own our cash deployments and, and do a better job of owning that cash conversion cycle. So when I was in treasury, uh, again, I mentioned this earlier, there was always, there seemed to be the, there's this adversarial relationship, 
right? Be between the AR team, we're trying to get paid, our customers, our AP teams. But I think that, that with the technological advances here, um, as we start to put um, some symmetry between the information that's available on both sides, just having the same information can really change the playing field. And it really, uh, the visibility that we have really gives us um, opportunities to be more uh, collaborative. So we'll talk about some things um, uh, from on the AR side. If we collaborate with our customers, we can make them more effective in terms on their accounts payable side. And what is that going to mean, right? They are going to be more amenable to paying us how we want to be paid and when we want to be paid. And then we'll also be able to align um, on some discount terms, op open up some opportunities for some dynamic discounts and other things as well. So, and I talk, that's theoretical side. Then on the practical side, uh, I'll do my best to, to, to walk through the technology and exactly how this is done. So, so we're really going to talk about some cutting edge technology um, here. And our webinar partner is absolutely um, on the cutting, in, cutting edge here. So this is not a, in any way a commercial um, for them specifically. It's just that the functionality that they have um, is, really, is really leading edge. And that's what we're about, um, leading edge and really showing what's out there to really allow companies to unlock the strategic value in the accounts receivable function. So we'll talk about how to leverage the automation to cure AR headaches and also how to develop strategic relationships um, with, your, uh, with, your, with your customers and your AP teams there. We'll talk about some of the strategic outcomes of AR automation. And I like to point out to folks where I think it's great for them to, to um, print on a slide. We'll give you a credit management checklist. So, so I think this is great. Um, for, for those of you that are, that are in the AR seat, but if you're not in the AR seat, you're in the treasury seat or CFO seat, this might be something that you want to take a look at uh, and, and take these things um, back to your AR team. And then we'll also, uh, I'll also offer you some additional resources. So with the limited time that we have together today, I'm not going to be able um, to really answer all the questions that you have and really tell you um, how to transform um, your accounts receivable process and optimize that and optimize your relationships with your with your uh, with your AP teams to your customers. However, I'm going to be able to give you um, some practical advice to follow, um, some questions to ask, uh, some avenues to, to look into um, in order to build those connections so you can start um, start collaborating uh, more effectively as well. So in terms of accounts receivable pain points, some of these may seem uh, like common sense. However, I think one of the reasons that I like to do this is that some of the times what this does it, is it really lets us set the pillars for the business case uh, that we might have. So, so we might be looking at some accounts receivable uh, automation solutions. So, so we might be hearing a lot about, hey, AR automation. So, the, so your first thing is, thinking what, what is the business case for AR automation? There's no way um, that it makes sense for my company. We might be a small company, not complicated. Well, I can tell you that for companies of all sizes, once you start to take a look um, in all the dimensions um, of the potential value proposition, you start to peel back the onion and the business case, uh, it really starts to make itself. So if you're not in accounts receivable, your treasury CFO, um, this might be a question you softball out. Um, to your credit manager or whoever leads your credit team, what you know? What are your pain points? Ask your credit manager, um, but also, but also ask your um, accounts receivable team, your folks that are making calls, and, and and what I think you'll find is that you'll get all these answers. Of course, at the very top, delinquent invoices is obviously a pain point. We want to be um, paid on time, paid early, get our money as soon as possible. As possible inefficient invoice exchange. Uh, I, I think this is what really causes um, some asymmetry of information, and, and it also just just kind of clogs up the channels. So I think uh, this is an opportunity. So if there is not um, an electric uh, electronic invoices being being exchanged, this is something where you can partner um, with your customers and their AP teams and show them um, how much more efficient there is. And this is really going to help us uh, mitigate the times that we have disputes uh, regarding those invoices. And again, um, timing of invoices is also crucial, crucial as well as, as, we're trying to, as, as we're trying to set up terms and we're trying to optimize that cash conversion cycle in deployment of cash. Again, asymmetry of information um, is misalignment on invoice terms. So, uh, so there can be 
Um, there can be some misalignment in terms of uh, uh, how, how they're specified, um, whether or not they're in writing, whether they're on the invoice itself, whether or not there's special terms for on your account. So there's that misalignment there. And sometimes this asymmetry of information um, causes the misalignment on the invoice terms. And then sometimes it can be something uh, such as the, the definition on the invoice term. So, so for me on that side, um, I actually would look, uh, look to my, the, our customer relationship manager, um, my person on the sales team, uh, and just make sure um, the conversations um, that they are having and that they have relationships um, with the accounts payable team, um, with our customers and make sure that our, that our terms are clear. So I, so I think that's something um, that, that is good to do. So sometimes a misalignment on terms, I think that's something that can be done by doing a, a yearly review, but also um, having systems where you can get feedback um, from conversations. So if you see that there are continual conversations um, between the AP team and then your AR team, then you can start to see, okay, there's an issue. What's the root cause of that issue? Is it how we have it specified? Um, on our invoices, do we need to look at the terms? So, um, so again, we we want to align on those invoices, and that alignment sometimes needs to be done um, face to face. And then again, we might need to involve um, our sales team and have these teams. And sometimes you're probably thinking that politics are a little tricky here, um, in some sense of on the AR side getting getting in touch with the with the AP team on the other side. But I think. Um, if your company has the right philosophy and if you have uh, the right um, salesperson and sales VP and sales management, when you when you when you communicate to them the value um, uh, of being on this, being on the same, being on the same side and just showing that uh, that if that that if we can, that we can absolutely be more of a partner. So there's definitely um, room in the middle um, in terms of the objectives of both sides. So 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 where you are now. There is probably a lot of room in the middle to make things better um, on both sides. Kind of related to the asymmetry, ineligible discounts are taken. So again, there, there could be some misunderstanding. It could be on purpose or it could be by mere definition, but, but, but we need to identify um, those issues and there's definitely pain points associated with that. Um, one the fact, the fact that they're taken, you don't have the money, it's gonna throw off your cash forecast. Uh, the 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 uh, the other part of that um, is that you have cash application issues, which we'll talk about we'll talk about next. So a pain point is this inac inaccurate remittance information. Uh, when I was in Treasury, this was a tremendous pain point for us. The remittance information we had one customer where it took our our accounting lead like two or three days to apply the invoices. So that inaccurate information is definitely. I'm a pain point and then and then going and then now that that there's there's much more vehicles out there that that will allow um that will allow our our uh, allow our suppliers to to get that information to us so our customers so so that we can have the alignment um, on that invoice information so so get that so 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 get that information um to the AP team um and get that information so we can have the cash application um again because of the asymmetry of information, you can have a unnecessary credit hold. So, so if the cash application is not being done correctly, there's asymmetry of information. We can cause an issue um, with our customers, which we don't need to. And obviously we want to avoid those issues. Related issue, you have um, blocking of, of valid orders because there might be a credit hold, there might be inaccurate information in terms of what was paid, what wasn't paid. There could be a dispute um, that you don't know about on a discount, so you could block valid orders. So that just causes consternation um, with our customers. And then, and then there's obviously collaboration hurdles. Um, some of those are just on the technology side. Um, if there's asymmetry of information, if if there are multiple parties involved on both sides uh, between your company and your customer, and there's no alignment there, and there's no one place uh, where you can get that. 360 version of the truth. So, uh, so there should really be someone um, who's kind of a, a head point um, as far as the relationship uh, with your customer. And so, and so, I think that visibility in, into that relationship and making sure all parties are informed and sometimes easier said than done. But I think if there's that system uh, in that CRS CRM system, if those 
those um, notes are made and those contacts are made and, and notes are made regarding potential issues and certain issues, um, we can start to uh, remove those collaboration hurdles. Again, it's all about um, the information and there's technology out there that helps with that. And then, and then from, from our side on the accounts receivable side, uh, what some things sometimes we view as invalid customer claims and disputes. I think some of that is obviously related to ineligible discounts taken. So, so again, there's, there's two points here. Some of these are perception and some of them um, are reality. So, so one of the good things about technology um, that we'll start to see uh, it, is that there's actually technology in artificial intelligence that allows us to actually identify the probability that an invoice is going to be paid late, that there's going to be a customer claim, that there's going to be a dispute. Um, if, if there's a pattern around the types of dispute, it helps us send emails out to mitigate um, the certain types of disputes. So it's amazing what some of the machine learning uh, is able to do now. And a lot of what happens with the technology, it, it, it allows us to be proactive instead instead of reactive so just interesting you know to think through all these pain points that we have and then take a look at um, how we're able to remove um, those pain points through technology and just being a strategic partner um, with our um, with 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 the AP teams of our customers and then in the process lowering our DSO as well so more just more pain points some little survey data a recent study by EY showed the top thousand companies could save more than 35% of $375 billion tied up in working capital through faster conversion of receivables. So again, it just shows um, how much opportunity um, is really locked up. And if we can if we can make the investment uh, to get those relationships in place, get those processes in place, find those mutually beneficial avenues of collaboration. Uh, automation, discount opportunities, it's, it's really going to unlock uh, our working capital. Uh, and then as we talked about this early, the speed of the credit to cash cycle, which from AR we'd like to mitigate, depends on the terms di uh, dictated um, by the customer. So so really an overall goal of what we're trying to do uh, is, is just create um, opportunities uh, to, to push things uh, the way that we'd like to see them. And in doing so, it's also valuable. Um, to our to our customers as well. So there's low hanging fruit. I talked a lot about a lot about this already. There's just a broken information exchange, and and, and again, the, uh, it's really been viewed um, in terms of a transactional or adversarial process um, instead of the fact that there's actually a relationship uh, that's going on. So it's absolutely possible, uh, you know, to be the case that my team is best in class AR. And in doing so, my team can help your AP team be a best-in-class AP team. So, so if we're both kind of adhering to, to some of the best practices, especially in terms of automation and collaboration, we have the visibility. We, we can do a better job of identifying um, opportunities for these win-win situations, whereas back when I was in Treasury, uh, the, these opportunities just, don't, just did not exist. We did not have uh, we just did not have this visibility everything uh, was done in silos and there really wasn't this appetite um, you know to take a look but now that we've got the technology the automation tools on the both sides we have the visibility and the visibility is what really gives us uh, some gives us some good good information on how we find those collaborative um, opportunities and then we also mentioned um, again it, it just opens up these, these uh, collaborations points open up um, us to, to improve our API, AR KPIs, because they're impacted, sometimes they're impacted due to largely manual, time-consuming collaboration and communication issues. And, and, it, as we, and if we work with our AP colleagues as partners, we, c we can remove um, a lot of the manual processes and, and, then, and then make this collaboration much more effective, real-time communication more effective. And the other thing, that we can also do, as I mentioned before, is we can not spend so much time on the phone. So, so I've I've, I've seen some research, you know, on the on the AP side uh, of how much time um, is spent on the phone, you know, with on the AP side from their side uh, on on the phone with if we're, we're on the AR side. So the amount of time that they just just spent um, becoming aligned 
on invoices, what's due, when it's due, what's the discount mean, how is that? I've seen this where there are days, days of employees, hours, and, and hours on the AR side as well. So, so there's definitely opportunity um, to to give employees those time that time back and make the AP team more productive at your customers and the AR team more more productive on your end, and then really take more control um, of that cash on our side, get that more quickly, and get that remittance information the way we need to see it, optimize that cash application. So now I'm going to go ahead and launch our first polling question. So I'm asking you uh, to share with me uh, which of the following is your company's biggest pain point relative to accounts receivable. Uh, of course, I would appreciate everyone's consideration in answering all of our polling questions here today. Those of you on the webinar who might be after CTP credits for today's webinar, you'll need to answer all of our polling questions. And I want to take this time to remind you that I can still take your questions in the questions area of your GoToWebinar control panel. So in order to be mindful um, of our time, I am going to go ahead and leave uh, the polling question up for another five seconds or so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close the polling question down, go ahead and um, share the results with you, make a little bit of color commentary, uh, and then we'll get into um, how we can uh, improve our, our, our customer relationships. So let me go ahead and close polling question here, and let me go ahead and share those results. 30%, um, uh, pretty, pretty even except for unnecessary credit hold that are, are backlogs, but we've got 30% communication, collaboration hurdles with customer, and then second, we've got misalignment on invoice terms with customers and then inaccurate or incomplete remittance information. And so I, I'm sure I've I know I've touched on these all together. But, but if I look at um, the root cause of, let's say, that those top three, to me, absolutely uh, speaks to um, asymmetry of information. And then, and then not having that one version of the truth where both parties are seeing the same information. So I think um, vehicles that technology we can use to eliminate um, the asymmetry of information. Uh, and then also in terms of just you know relationships. So making the connections with the relationships, uh, getting through any internal politics um, that you might have. So creating the right culture um, on your side in the accounts receivable department that it, you know, I think it, I think there's great value if, if we're able to reach out and collaborate with, 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 with the AP team and our customers. Now, now let's go to the sales team and, and see how we make that happen and, and just showing them the great value um, and that can have make their jobs easier. Some of the benefits we've already mentioned, um, it, it should be a fairly easy conversation uh, to have. So thank you very much. Um, for everyone who answered our polling question. And now let's go ahead to um, improving the customer relationships uh, and the DSO. And then one of the things how we can partner is, is some of this is just um, some companies just think that um, just, just some of the under the assumption that it, that it costs more. Um, E-billing is hard to do. It, there's a high cost to it. It's, it's not very efficient, but there's absolutely the opportunity um, to reduce cost um, through 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 e-billing. And, and on the customer side, absolutely uh, appreciate that, the side of it. To, again, we talked about one of the pain points uh, is, is absolutely the inefficient exchange um, of invoices. And so, um, so, so that's key. And then on the receipt of the invoices side, um, if on your side of it, you're matching the, them to a PO, just having the electronic exchange of information um, is much more uh, efficient. Uh, and then the second piece would be um, access uh, to payment options. So, 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 so if we're, so if we're getting, so uh, if we are, uh, getting paid, um, what we want to do is really help communicate, uh, help communicate um, that, that there's better ways to pay other than, uh, other than checks and, and it can make sense for us 
to accept um, electronic payments um, on our side as well. So, so we so we can really uh, work with our AP partners to 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 really allow them access to payment options, and it's going to offer uh, benefits to them. And then and then we can also again we talked about uh, technology can allow us to facilitate real time collaboration with the customer accounts payable teams, and then and then we can move to improve um, the customer experience and then we, we can endeavor to receive the right information um, on the receivable side so we can get that cash application um, done effectively. So um, reducing costs through e-billing, couple points here, um, EIPP it just enables businesses to exchange documents, invoices, and purchase orders electronically rather than on paper, uh, reduces errors, uh, just, and just, just makes things easier. And then on, on, the, on the receiving side, there is, there's OCR technology, there's AI technology, so it really eliminates some inefficiencies um, on the process. If done right, users have one view of all payable and receivable transactions online, can quickly view, query, approve, manage, or pay for those transactions with a click of a mouse. So this can really help us uh, get away from one of those big hurdles that I talked about, which is the asymmetry of information. Um, EIPP allows companies to process invoices from suppliers electronically and handle electronic payments on the bank end. So, so again, on the on the AP side, um, there's no longer a struggle for a manual paper-based payment processing. Um, it's really the most costly method um, for companies, and there's information that you can actually share uh, share in terms of, of checks. Uh, there's a AFP fraud and control survey that has some great information. Talks about how much a check costs. There's also risks that are associated uh, um, with those checks. So, um, so there are ways to to uh, to share information in terms of the benefits of the um, electronic payments, uh, and then on your side. Um, of it, as long as you you are you are able to get the remittance information uh, that you need uh, on that side of it, and, and also the timing of that um, can also um, we can also help shorten that the that uh, did that that cycle as well. Um, also, you can get full invoice details, and you can have additional controls. Um, buyers can check the accuracy of the invoices um, they are receiving. So again, it helps facilitate um, the process. Um, it's ideal adoption for SMBs. This technology is inexpensive and it readily integrates with ERP. Um, I wouldn't quite go without disrupting the existing systems. I would say there is minimal disruption in a lot of the systems um, that are out there now, um, especially in the AR automation space, they are uh, cloud-based systems. So a lot of the cloud-based and SaaS systems are, are made to really uh, communicate uh, with each other, uh, and they have APIs. So 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 they're really built to to push information um, back and forth. So you can offer um, them access to to payment options. So again, this is something you want to ask internally. Be considered offering payment discounts, offer dynamic discounts. Um, accepting credit cards, offering supply chain financing, changing the size and complexity of your invoices, and offering a customer-specific template. So again, you're sitting, you might be sitting here thinking, yeah, that, that's all nice, but that's that's all beneficial, you know, to the other side of the aisle. Well, what you have to do is you you have to look at that. Um, in doing so, in building that strategic relationships, um, what are the benefits? Uh, that it's going to add uh, to your company in terms of, of efficiency, in terms of optimizing um, working capital and, and owning that, that that credit credit to cash cycle. So so again, I think I think there's there's middle road here. I think sometimes there isn't visibility um, into what's going on. The processes might be so inefficient, be old, and and these things haven't really been considered um, in a long time. So let's just look at how the process works. If we offer a payment discount, what is the cost to that um, on our side? And what's the cost cost of the benefit versus getting the money sooner, that dynamic discount? Um, how does that help us? Uh, what, what does it mean if we uh, accept credit cards? Uh, what, what is the cost 
of accepting the credit card versus uh, versus when we get the payment and the information we get to the payment. So so just really doing um, a real quick you know cost benefit analysis. But I think if you look at uh, you know there's there's definitely a portfolio of payment options and you should look at uh, the the optimal portfolio of payment options um, that you can accept. And then part of that is is making it a better customer experience. A lot of customers uh, expect to be able to pay um, in a certain way. So, and you want to be able to do that. And in doing that, you want to make that as to, as cost effective as possible. And offering certain payment methods can actually be a competitive advantage um, versus some of your other customers. And the industry might exactly dictate that. So, you definitely um, want to be out in front of that. But if you're but if you're out there offering up front, your sales guys are offering up front, it makes you look like that you are interested in a relationship and not a transaction. So, so what we're seeing in CFO research is that it's very important uh, that, that, that CFOs and companies increase the level of engagement um, with their customers. So going into this year, the number one concern uh, was that companies were not going to be able to more effectively engage their customers, deepen those, their, deepen those relationships. Well, believe it or not, it's very things like this um, are very important um, in deepening those customer relationships. So, so you want to have a good relationship uh, with the AP team over there, and this just adds to the value um, that you offer your customers, and 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 that information does does get up up and down the ladder. So um, real-time collaboration um, with uh, AP teams, uh, again, I think some of this is kind of self-evident, leads to positive results, um, but these are things um, that you can do um, to make sure that, uh, that you're on the same page. Monthly review of account status with your, with your buyers, discussion of resolution of disputed invoice. Again, um, what we should start to do uh, is start to look at the root causes, uh, the conversations, uh, is it about how the invoices are presented, uh, what's on the invoice, what's being communicated from, from our sales team um, to the AP team. So, so we need to look at those root causes. And then, of course, the visibility will allow us to proactively avert blocking orders. Um, and, you, and you can frequently uh, review credit utilization limits, and then you can start to see um, if someone's bumping up against their limit and what and may, maybe that might have something to do with inefficiency and in cash application but but what you can do uh, in, in some of the machine learning is, is there can be a probability assigned so let's say your credit limits ten million dollars and your customers paying well but they're getting to nine 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 and a half and then all of a sudden there might be a high probability that they're going to go over their credit limit uh, based on an order in your in your CRM system so so you can start to identify the count the accounts where it makes sense to raise that credit limit right so you can program in these rules so the customer customer pays on time all the time for six months a year they're bumping up against their credit limit limit of course do you need the credit limit they get based on the history um, we see the probability uh, would you know would would be low that they wouldn't that they would uh, that they wouldn't be worthy of that limit and then and then again talk about visibility can be accommodated through the use of the EIPP and also um, the, the customer portals. Again, uh, just providing one place, it's kind of one version um, of the truth. You're both looking at the same informations, information and you can, you can have a conversation almost in real time. You can have a conversation across borders. And the other thing that, it, that this visibility does is it helps you uh, function more effectively internally in terms of everyone on your AR team. They have visibility into what's going on, and and also your sales teams. So so you're not so you're not stepping on your own toes in terms of that customer relationship management, um, which we see at times. So of course we want to improve the customer experience. Um, how do we do that? Um, we want to acknowledge and raise claim to a disputed invoice. Um, we want to make sure we check the accuracy of invoices and validate um, those payment terms. Uh, want to make sure the information is correct um, going out the doors. You know, want to enable access to all the, the documents needed. Um, we want to check resolution of disputed invoices again. 
uh, their technology is amazing. What you can see is is when there's some sort of holdup in the workflow or there's a dispute, there's, there can be emails that can be sent out to certain people, certain managers. And so you can really take off, take, take some of these things on proactively and get them done. And then there's a easier exchange um, of credit notes as well. So again, that's going to improve uh, the customer experience. Um, of course, we all want the right of remittance information on the cash application side. So again, using EIP, people facilitate that, and then uh, and then um, and then many AP shops are using the ACH remittance process when sending um, the ACH payment. So 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 we can def definitely work with work with our customers to make sure we get that right remittance information. So let me go ahead and launch our second polling question. Asking you to share with us how you would characterize your company's relationship with your customers AP team uh, Again, I would appreciate everyone's consideration in answering all of our polling questions uh, Here today those of you who might be interested in CTP credits you need to answer all of the polling questions And of course I can still take your questions in the questions area of your go-to webinar control panel. So now I'm going to go ahead and leave the polling question up for another few seconds and we'll go ahead and take a quick look uh, at the results and then we'll get more into the practice of how these things I've talked about are actually accomplished and I will do my best uh, to go through Kieran's part of the presentation. Again, my apologies, he was not able to join us for the webinar today. So let's go ahead, close the polling question and we see that 10% non-existent, 47% um, non-ideal, getting better, and 32% are almost there. So I'm glad to see uh, that we've got 79%. Um, you know, are are definitely on the on the right road. Realize it. Realize it's a problem. And and I think the key um, again to getting from not ideal to good. Um, if you don't have some sort of AR automation, have looked into that, that could definitely put you from not ideal, from good to great. But then also, again, it's also about uh, the relationships, the politics, making sure everyone's engaged uh, and on the same page uh, on that side of it. So thank you very much, uh, everyone, for your consideration. So again, let me I'll, I'll run through the automation piece. That, so I call it the cure for AR headaches and fuel for better supplier relationships. So again, um, to the webinar, better relationships uh, and also leads to uh, lower DSO and lower processing costs. Um, just a quick words about High Radius. Uh, they're absolutely a leader, um, an integrated receivables platform. Um, pretty amazing some of the functionality. Uh, they have three, over 300 clients, $500 billion of receivables, over 650 employees globally. Um, fascinating to me um, how these things work, and, and, and we'll talk about these things in a little, little detail. Um, at the end of the webinar, you'll have the opportunity to ask to be connected um, with High Radius if, if, if you want to learn more and how all these pieces work. And you see um, at the, in the pieces of the platform, you see all the pain points, and there's a specific cloud or area that deals with those directly credit EIPP cash app deductions and collections so so it really makes sense and it's really intuitive and and how the AI really really helps is is pretty fascinating to me as a as a treasury professional who practiced uh, when there was not nearly um, as much technology so some of the dimensions of the ROI um, to the AR technology looking to make business case e-invoicing and e-payments, you improve your customer collaboration, and then we talked about you improve your customer experience with your seamless collaborations between the AR teams. Um, and then, you know, and then in terms of, you know, getting across the hurdle, um, if we're, if we're looking at the, um, at the e-payment side where we're trying to get folks off of checks, um, from the Federal Reserve Bank, we still see difficult to persuade suppliers to accept electronic payments, payments partners can't send or receive remittance, shortage of IT resources, concern about payments fraud, check systems work well. I, I think we've, uh, I think we've uh, talked through um, some of these and I think all these uh, are myths and those of you uh, internally, um, you know, on the, on the AR side, these are, um, these, 
these are things that we need to uh, need to actually consider and that these myths aren't actually true and we were able to overcome these and it actually uh, makes sense so if we look at um, kind of a current status which might be a more manual you have a the invoicing supplier the paper manual retrieve manual entry archive ERP updated and then we go back to the supplier side flag invoice initiate payment payment so that's a very manual process very complex process and then here is then here is here is what it means right excessive manual work time consuming and then error prone given uh, the more people involved the more parties uh, involved the more steps involved uh, the more we're going to have potential for errors to happen and for backlogs in the workflow and then um, what's possible now is you can have uh, digital collaboration they have there's extensive supplier buyer networks if you you're both in the supplier buyer networks it enables digital collaboration integrated with supplier ERP integrated buyer accounting system so you see it's it's really it's really going through um, uh, the one hub and, and it really facilitates this real-time uh, digital collaboration so compared to what we saw previously uh, this this is really where technology is allowing companies of all sizes to go and, and really take control of that cash conversion cycle and part of taking control of that cash conversion cycle is really facilitating better relationships uh, with the accounts payable teams or customer so so just a little example customers accounting system again it, it invoice is created in the customers accounting system and then you can then you then it gives you the ability you can straight through pay through the through the accounting system so just just some of that workflow there and then you it facilitates invoicing and payment in a single step you're you're eliminating all the paper all the x's there and then your erp is updated and then boom it goes right through the system so all, all of these steps and all these manual processes uh, are really going away so here's what it means integrated su supplier billing and, and buyer payment process faster invoice delivery seamless payment from accounting system no need for additional re remittance and straight through uh, straight through cash posting so again you can the benefits from this are uh, are very self-evident and you can see how uh, how departments across the enterprise uh, are impacted in terms of being uh, more efficient and then in terms of AR processing um, from from where we are today there's obviously a lot of issues um, barriers to customer collaboration so uh, w without the systems that we've already described the majority of time is lost in collecting documents and classification there's that asymmetry uh, of information there's those collaboration barriers and then what happens you have slower resolutions we have disgruntled customers and, and high DDO so so, so you look at okay how can we how can the technology really help us cure those headaches but well, we can have from customers and internal teams we have that single um, integrated platform that symmetry of information uh, we have that research and then we can boom communicate the resolution um, and, and then at the end of the day uh, analysts focus on faster resolution the information is there um, you can really see the issue you can start to see uh, the root cause and here's here's the two two points that I made earlier probably not all that effectively is it allows better coordinating with your customers but also coordinating um, with your internal teams so it could potentially be the case that the root cause um, might be coming from someone on your internal team you might be able to identify that communicate that with them uh, mitigate that with them obviously not with the visibility with the customers but it really gives gives everyone visibility and then also it helps in the dispute resolution if you can see uh, kind of kind of how it started what's already been said um, not said and then again just gives more effective analysis and a lot of times um, with that is it with this with the symmetry of information the the solution almost represents itself and then just a, a few a few screen prints here deductions handling on the received data so again it, it gives us that visibility into that um, we can program it uh, we can we can program it um, we, we get that we get that reason code right into their right into uh, their ERP so so that gives us the ability to identify 
and, and we can actually click in there, go to that reason code. So that's going to allow us to be um, much more effective in terms of that deductions handling. We get, we get that visibility. Boom, we might get a notification. Um, what's the reason code? And then we can also um, dig into that reference field, click on that payment amount, look at the invoice, see if there's anything tied to that, and that will allow us to, to resolve that dispute more effectively. And then and then um and then there and then there's some mapping that goes on so there's a mapping that can go on between reasons code that may come in so you can automatically change to something um, your erp might be able to understand and help us facilitate um, that deductions handling so again oftentimes the deduction handling process is is manual and time consuming and this can help us uh, make that process more efficient and then in terms of of course an issue that we face customer collaboration um, there can be uh, missing remittance. It's a common scenario today. So if you're working on the, 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 the cash app side, so you can identify missing remittance, notify collector, and then we have to go through all these steps to, to apply the cash. So, uh, so sometimes it's just a matter um, of, uh, of the payment type. And, but the, the good news is with using some of the EIPP systems, we can actually, um, we can actually do a better job in, in getting that remittance information um, communicated in a way that's effective and in the and in the format that it needs to be in a collaborative manner and reduce that time um, for that cash application and then so going from where we were before uh, again all these the five steps cost cash application collector customer very disjoint very disjoint there and what we can see is that in the integrated platform we have when we identify the missing remittance, automated email to the customer, and then the customer um, submits the remittance. So, so there's really the automated uh, cash flow. So we're not making phone calls, figuring out um, what's going on. Uh, there's something that automatically identifies there's an issue, automatically gets the resolution process in place, uh, and then and then that automatically. Um, uh, prompts the customer to submit the remittance information and helps us on the cash application side. Uh, again, just another screenshot example, um, just uh, just an automate what this might look like. Uh, remittance, uh, payment without remittance, just, just very easy, automates a nice message, um, thanks for doing business, and then it just then it just says there might be something missing and it gives you a direct hyperlink and just makes it very easy to go in there, boom, um, get get that remittance information put in there, um, and then and then get us on their way. Often and that oftentimes this will mitigate the need um, for that phone call. Uh, and then again, and then just just kind of showing um, what this might look like, how they can submit the remittance details. Uh, again, some of this is in the setup that you have. Um, uh, some of these field some of these data you can pull in the files um, pull in data from files but it gives you the bill number due date the code and the currency amount again so so this is something um, that you would you would customize and if if need be they could do it manually and then it say let's say submit and then that's something um, that your systems understand potentially goes into your ERP system so so uh, so again it it it, it, it allows that um, correction to come, um, you know, for, from their side, and, and that also can help eliminate some issues and, and inconsistencies there. And again, and then again, uh, it's on the uh, the format in the format that we need to see it at, that we need to see it in that makes it uh, cash out more effective on our side. So take a quick look at, um, you know, how we how we can really. Uh, get to seamless collaboration on uh, between the AR teams. If, if an order is blocked, current status, uh, you have a blocked order, um, it goes to your collection team, uh, dunning process for that customer, you know, da -da -da, cash pays, cash pays, credit team, and the order is released. So that, that's what that process looks like there. Um, if you leverage an integrated approach, um, Seable's platform, the, the AI can predict the order is blocked. Um, automatic correspondence, it can say that um, or predict the orders blocked that might be blocked, send information out, um, facilitate uh, facilitate that order not being blocked, and then customer pays, cash is, cash is auto-applied, credit is received. So um, the 
time lost in cash in cash reconciliation when collecting payment to release a blocked order is saved. So again, a part of this is really interesting. It's it's around the, the machine learning technology where that where that based on behavior and other factors it can predict an order is going to be blocked and then we can automate um, some correspondence uh, going out to the customer. If there are certain certain things that are done, customer promises to pay. Maybe there's a a, uh, a message or an ACH is set up, and that way, boom, we can then that facilitates that payment being done, that order not being held, and then that credit um, is freed up, and we we avoid that issue, unnecessary issue. Um, what does that mean? A better relationship uh, with our customer. Th a big issue that we could have been avoided, and then also. What, what, what would often type happen, this would be something um, where the where CFO would be brought in. And so one of the things that we want to do is we want to work um, to the point where our CFO has a relationship with our customers and we are not playing um, referee all the time. So this, this is good when we avoid our CFOs uh, making, uh, making these calls to customers. Um, and also on the CFO side, um, if we are facilitating more effective AP, um, on our customer side, that might be a some point of conversation, um, you know, for the for the for the CFO at the other company. So so that's just a great way uh, to build those relationships. Um, a little bit of a uh, a case study um, here um, with Tyson. I'll do my best. Apologies, the case study here. I'm not tremendously familiar with the customer, but but just but just some of the some of the challenges that they face. You can see. Um, um, some just some uh, some disjoint systems uh, that might have been in place, and then uh, the the credit portal was not integrated uh, with the ERP system. So there was that big inherent barrier um, in terms uh, on the collaboration side, and and really causing some some inherent inherent delays on how to uh, effectively um, with the process, and then and then what happened um, with with the workflow uh, with the, the, what, what it look, looks like today. Um, obviously, uh, it's really integrated with the ER, ERP system um, and, and the AR automation system. So you can see um, that there's actually arrows, the flows, there, there's no block, there's no blocked areas. So, so it really helps facilitate um, that blocked order process and really is proactive in, in not blocking those orders that don't need to be and making sure that there is a much uh, improved in terms of customer relationship management and avoiding issues that really don't need to happen. And here is really um, some of the uh, amazing statistics, some of the value proposition there. 15% um, increase in credit reviews, 73% um, drop in consolidation customer master. Um, number of customers onboarded is tremendously more efficient. And then the orders and deliveries blocked is down. Um, 2.5 percent, and that is a huge number um, given the size um, of Tyson. So those are some really, uh, some really great benefits. Again, it enables them to do customer credit reviews uh, more efficiently, uh, allocate their credit more effectively, um, do a better job of keeping that customer master in line, making sure those credit limits are all rolling up to the parent and are accurate, efficiently onboard our customers, improve that customer experience, and not block those orders that don't need to be blocked. So uh, pretty impressive. Um, so key components of the value proposition uh, for integrated approach receivables. Again, we talked about there's a productivity of the process. Um, and you can connect all processes across credit to cash, eliminate time lost in coordination, document information, and you can share your intelligence across teams. Again, I think that's a key, that, that symmetry of information internally as well as externally. And then you can enable seamless collaboration with the, with the customer. So you fast track the processing, you're keeping the customer, um, you're keeping the customer in the loop and you have the agility to be proactive um, in those relationships. And then some more strategic outcomes of uh, AR automation. You free ups and allocate your cash application resources to high value activities, uh, immediate efficiency gains by eliminating clerical data. Again, manual processes also eliminates uh, risk exposures. 
you you can it helps you minimize bad debt across customer base by having a proactive credit management process. Uh, you can eliminate trade deduction backlog by, by by automating processes, and then it just improves collections efficiency and get pat get paid faster across all customers. Again, by removing the manual effort to send collection correspondence and and to these non-strategic accounts. So again, um, the business case is tremendously compelling. We, I like it, and then we have to think out of the box a little bit for me in terms of treasury. So in AR, we, we have to really think, um, how can we collaborate with our customers and, and their AP team and and, may, and show them that, that you know, doing, elect, doing electronic payments, EIBP. So there's things that we can do together that are going to be valuable um, to both parties, builds a strong, strong relationship on both sides. Uh, here's a slide that I would recommend um, that you print out just a really, uh, I think it's really good, really kind of, you know, it's kind of the ABCs of best practices, credit management, have a plan, be proactive, develop your KPIs, everyone involved, roles and responsibilities, standardize your communication processes and messaging. And as I mentioned several times, it, you, you want to venture to have that asymmetric information. Um, you want to have your eyes on, on document credit and collection activities, centralized data and communication, own your resource allocation, be proactive, focus on key accounts. You want to automate your business processes. You want to make sure your customer financial information is as up to date as possible. You want to absolutely involve and engage um, your sales team. And again, really speak to them about how being more of a getting engaged with the AP team with your customers can be valuable. Um, you want to, again, I think the overarching thing is that you want to um, work um, as a team um, team with 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 the AP with the AP folks at your customer, but also work internally as a team um, on the AR side and really facilitate um, that everyone has the same information and that you're all working understand what the goals are and working towards those same goals and the KPIs. In terms of uh, additional resources um, that we have, I would encourage you to take a look at. Um, white paper, the imperative for eliminating paper from receivables and credits, um, automating AR, building a winning business case. I touched on that a little bit. There's hyperlinks here. Um, there's absolutely, uh, High Radius has some great thought leadership um, on their website. And then also um, my, my company, Treasury Careers, we have um, some great um, resources there that really talk about how to own the cash conversion cycle, talk about AR automation, also talk about AP automation, talk about how to align align those to really own that uh, cash conversion cycle. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and launch our final polling question here. I only have time uh, for one question in order to be uh, mindful uh, of our time. Um, question will be, um, what is the most common issue you face when trying to convert companies from checks to electronic payment, electronic payments? I think, I think what it is, is just that, that there are myths, um, that your suppliers are not going to want to have electronic payments and internally, uh, we have to be educated and see that there are values. So uh, it, it's all about the education of, okay, what does it mean check versus electronic payments? What are the risks associated with each payment type? Uh, what is the cost associated with each payment type? Uh, what is the reason um, that we, we fell in love with checks? Well, one of the reasons was the remittance information. Well, we don't, uh, there's other ways to get that done more effectively. So now, um, you know, and then we've always done it that way. So now, uh, so now we need to think a little bit outside the box. So, so I think a lot of it is just getting away um, from the miss and just and just when companies realize how much time it's costing them um, it, to write checks and the risk that they're exposed to, I, I think it's a it's a much uh, a much easier a much easier um, sell to to uh, facilitate those conversions. So I'm going to go ahead and formally close the Q and A session, and I'm going to go ahead and close our final uh, polling question. Uh, I would like to once again thank our webinar sponsor, High Radius. We appreciate and share their commitment to thought leadership. Please note you'll have the opportunity to be connected with High Radius in the post-webinar survey, which I'll launch after my final comments. 
I look forward to having you on future Treasury Careers webinars. Once again, to you, our audience, thank you so much for your valuable time. Make the rest of your day great.